Hi, this is Kara Tierney from Monroe Community College, and in this video I'm going to further explain Bohr's atomic model of the hydrogen atom, specifically talking about what happens when an electron moves between energy levels. So if you recall, in Bohr's model, the electron can move between quantized energy levels. It starts at the lowest energy level, n equals 1, which is called its ground state. If it gains energy, it can move to a higher energy level, and this is called an excited state. When it moves back down to its ground state, it will release energy in the form of light. So let's take a look at this in more of a vertical manner. If I draw the plus one charge of the nucleus, that n equals one, that is the lowest energy level, and it's the closest energy level to the nucleus. N equals 2 is farther out and has a higher energy value. As you get further out, notice that the differences in radius as well as energy get closer together. The gap between the first and the second energy levels is the highest energy gap. And therefore, if you have an electron that is in the second energy level and it drops back down to the first energy level, that photon of light will have a fairly high energy value compared to one jumping from the fourth down to the third. Now each of these energy levels has a specific energy that the electron possesses in order to be in that energy level. The equation to calculate this energy is given here, where the energy of an electron in N shows us which level is equal to negative RH, which stands for the Rydberg constant, the value given here, times the quantity Z over N squared where Z is the number of protons and N is your energy level. For the purposes of this class, we're only going to be talking about hydrogen atoms, so Z is equal to one since all hydrogen atoms have one proton. Now if we wanted to know what kind of light we would get from each of these individual drops in energy levels that the electron can perform, then we can calculate the amount of energy. So if we take the gap between n equals 2 and n equals 1. When n equals 2, we can calculate the amount of energy that it has when it is in the second energy level. We can calculate the amount of energy that it has when it's in the first energy. And when it jumps down, the amount of energy that it needs to give off is the difference in energies between these energy levels. And this photon that it releases has the equivalent energy as the difference in those energy levels. And remember that each different photon energy will have its own unique color. So if we take a look at this in a different way, these are some of the lines that are in the hydrogen spectrum. The gap from 2 to 3, so when an electron drops from the third level to the second level, appears as a red line. When an electron drops from the fourth level down to the second level, it appears as a blue-green line, and the, the violet color appears when an electron drops from the fifth energy level to the second energy level. Now a lot of students are confused by this because they ask, well why aren't there any electrons dropping down to the first energy level? Well this does occur. If I had an electron that jumped from the second to the first level, this energy gap, as you recall, is much larger than the other energy gaps. And so in fact this energy would be too high and so consequently would have a very small wavelength. Remember that wavelength and energy are inversely proportional to each other when it comes to light. So this would have a line. It would be way over here on the spectrum and in fact it appears but it is out of the range that the human eye can detect. So this is how we calculate the energy of the photons are released. It is equal to the difference in energies of the jump that the electron has performed. So you take the final energy level value and you subtract from it the initial energy level. So if we're going from E4 to E2, like the blue-green line, then this would be equal to E2 minus E4. If you are calculating the amount of a jump where energy has been released, you will get a negative value. 
if you are calculating the amount of energy that needs to be gained by an electron in order to jump up, you are going to have a positive value. So let's look at how we could do this. What is the energy of the photon absorbed to achieve the transition n equals 1 to n equals 2 in a hydrogen atom? So notice that we are jumping up from n equals 1 to n equals 2. This indicates to us that we need a positive value. So keep that in mind. Remember that our energy is going to be equal to our final minus our initial. So we're going to be subtracting e2 minus E1, final minus initial. And this is equal to, if we rewrite our equation, remember that E to the N is equal to negative RH, and we're going to multiply that by C over N squared. So we're going to substitute that in for each. So for E2, we have negative RH. And z, we are always going to write as 1, and we're going to substitute in 2 for the n. And we square that. Now we're subtracting from that negative rh, where z, once again, is equal to 1, and now we have 1 as our value of n. And we square that. So we get our delta e is equal to negative rh, one-half squared is equal to one-fourth. And we're subtracting from that negative rh, and one over one squared is one. So now I'm going to plug in my values. So negative, my rh value, remember, the Rydberg constant is equal to 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18th joules, 1 fourth is 0.25, and minus a minus is a plus, the Rydberg constant. And you should get plus 1.64 times 10 to the negative 18th Joules. That is the energy of the photon that must be absorbed in order to have an electron jump from n equals 1 to n equals 2. Now that amount of energy is equal to the gap between the first and the second energy levels. And in order for that jump to happen, that exact amount of energy must be absorbed. No more, no less in order for this transition to happen. The second part of our question asks, to calculate the wavelength of that photon absorbed to achieve the transition that we just calculated. This is actually a review of lessons that we did in class earlier, so I would like you to try and solve this by yourself. Remember the relationship between wavelength, energy, and the other variables that we've talked about with light. So try and solve this, and then I'll show you once you press play. So if you recall, there are two main equations that we've used when we're dealing with light. The first is that the speed of light is equal to our wavelength times our frequency. The other one is that the energy of the wavelength is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency. So we are trying to find our wavelength and we are given our energy. So what I'm going to do is try and combine these two equations. I see that they both contain frequency, so instead of calculating frequency and then plugging that into the second equation, what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for frequency in this equation. So frequency is equal to energy divided by Planck's constant. I'm now going to plug that in for frequency so that I get C is equal to wavelength times E over H. Now you could approach this problem in a less algebraic manner by just calculating frequency and then uh, using the second equation. That's fine too, you'll get the same answer. I just prefer to rearrange all of my variables first. So I am solving for my wavelength, so we're going to rearrange this equation so that I'm solving for it, and I get that 
my wavelength is equal to C times the inverse of E over H, which is H over E. So basically I have CH over E. So C is equal to 2.998 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. H, if you recall, you might need to look this back up, is equal to 6.626 times 10 to the negative 34th joules seconds. And I'm dividing that by my energy value that I calculated in the last problem. That was 1.64 times 10 to the negative 18th joules. My joules cancel out and my seconds cancel out. And this gives me meters. So I'm going to calculate this in meters first, but notice that we are asked for nanometers. Whenever you're asked for wavelength of light, it's usually going to be asked for in nanometers. So when I calculate this, I get 1.21 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. Now we're going to convert that into nanometers. Remember that 10 to the negative ninth meters is equal to one nanometer. My meters cancel out and that gives me 121 nanometers. So that is the wavelength of the light that you need to shine upon an electron in order to have it transition up to the second energy level. Now I want you to give this one a try. I would like you to determine the wavelength of the photon corresponding to the emission of an electron from n equals 5 to n equals 2 in a hydrogen atom. So this is very similar. You're basically combining the two steps of the problem that we just did together. Notice that we are calculating for an emission of electrons. So think about what the sign of your energy is going to have to be when you go down in energy levels. The second question asks, will a photon of energy equal to that calculated in part A be able to promote the electron from n equals 2 up to n equals 4? So if I took that photon and I shined it on an electron that's in n equals 2, would it go up to n equals 4? Why don't you try these by yourself and we'll discuss them in class and I'll see you there.